I've arrived at part 23 on building the Black Pearl All Scenario version, and I've got quite a bit to show you. So let me uh, do like an overview or a flyby, as I call it, of the ship as it sits, and then I'll come back and I'll go into more detail on some of the issues that I had and some of the ways that I chose to do things. Before I move on to the flyover and the more detailed aspects of the build, I want to give a shout out to my fans there in the greater Orlando, Florida area. Appreciate you watching, appreciate every one of you. Thanks. working on perfecting this loop that holds the dead eye to this support member. So let me show you what I've been trying to come up with. This very small open end of this wire where it pinches up against it to hold it in place, that open end, that should go towards the ship, in my opinion, is putting the wire to the right side of the dead eye and wrapping around from there. And once I get that kind of how I want it, I'll take the dead eye out and I'll make this loop tighter, actually smaller than the dead eye, and it gives a little bit of spring to it. And then I can open that back up gently because you don't want to lose the springiness of it. You don't want to bend it. And then loop this back over again. And again, it takes some playing with it. You can, I think I mentioned before, you can kind of take some sort of pliers and shape it as best you can. And now twist the wire behind the dead eye, but you're not going to loop it around more than three quarters or the one time because there's not space, it'll make too much bulk. And then snip that extra wire off. Then there's two straightening motions because it's actually a little curved this way. So hold the wire and straighten that out. And it's ready to go on the ship. I've placed all those dead eye stems on the, uh, not sure what this piece is called. And now I'm just kind of securing it. And I used wood glue here only because it gives me more time to work with it. And this is just some painter's tape. So I taped that all the way across trying to push this outer cover against those. Now these will still be free in there. They're not glued. That way I can maneuver them, I can bend them, and get them in the position that I want. So that's worked pretty well. I'm a little disappointed with myself in how I position these. These really should be lined up better and nicer and straighter. And I also should have checked out the nails closer. There are nails that come with the ship that are the same diameter of the holes in these 
supports. So I did find them, so just make sure you look in your kit. I found these two bags and thought that, well, that's the larger and the smaller because they're very similar. I think they're really designed to be the same. And then there was another bag of these real tiny ones, and they fit through just fine. My error, so I will correct it on the rest of the ship. I have one more small nail to put in that hole right there. You can see I have these drain port caps in place, and I'll just mention it is a little tedious, but that's the nature of shipbuilding. But once I get it where I want it to be, I've been taking this uh, punch and at the base of the nail, tapping it. And that flattens that piece out against that little uh, drain port. And I am trying to make these operational. So what I've been doing is drilling a very small hole right next to the opening for that, uh, that drain port. And then putting a little bit of, uh, oh, it's a medium viscosity super glue. It takes a little while to set up. Put it on the tip of that nail and then insert it. Once that dries, I think I'll be able to pivot that open and closed. I'll probably just leave them closed, but it's nice to know that they work. So I just have one more to, to install, and both sides are done. And I did make them. They are operational. Of course, I selected one that isn't there. So then the uh, water can go out. And I put these on the direction that I did because in the pictures of the ship and in the instructions, it shows all of them with the hinge to the back of the ship. So I think that's kind of neat that they're operational. I think I mentioned before I'll probably leave them all shut, but I could, you know, open up a few of them. That's a very small detail. I've never seen it before. As you know, I'm an intermediate shipbuilder. I either missed a reference or can't find it, but I know that there's a little etching on the top of each one of these supports, and it has a support that glues in place. I'm not sure if you can see that. Right like that, and there's several on each one. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in place because I knew they existed. I think they were on the placard with the lifeboats. But there's several, so let me go ahead and get those glued in place. I have all the supports in place and secured. I want to mention that I did sand those supports because the part that went up against the ship, it was a perfect 90 degree angle and it really wasn't that at the ship where it, where it mounted to the ship. So I went ahead and used my handy dandy miniature belt sander and sanded all those at a slight angle just by eye, not perfect by any means. But it did improve the, the uh, seating against the ship. Then I also have discovered some other things that have to be put on the ship. I'll discuss those in a minute. But I, I've learned that you have to improvise. Here's these initial supports. I haven't got this side nailed on yet. But when I got to the open side of the ship, I realized, well, they're just going to dangle down. There's nothing to support them. So I improvised, I put a, just a, a plank here. It's going to be a little lighter than the rest of the ship. I may darken it, we'll see, I just haven't decided yet. So I just had it extend where those actually will rest. And I'm just going to put them behind them. I will cut off the bottom part that shows, and I'll glue them to the back of this plank. So you can see now it opens back up, and then there's another one here. So that's my improvising. Let me clean some of the glue off here. I'll do that off camera in a minute. So once that's done, you can get a kind of an idea how they'll look right there. All of these dead eyes will be straightened up and put in the proper position before I start doing any of the, the rigging work. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on some of these supports for the dead eyes. And there's a second piece that goes in between each dead eye that is an additional support. I have one more of those to put in. So I'm just going to show on that one how I got this to work after I've done all these all over the ship, trying several different techniques and which one worked best for me. So let me show you. Here's the piece that I'm going to use as an example. And what I found is a 0.7 millimeter micro mini drill bit 
kind of fits right in that hole. There might be a little resistance. If there is, I kind of twisted that in there to open that hole just slightly. And it actually may be a .8. I've got some more on order. My other drill bits came in. So the two sizes that I ordered are uh, .8 millimeter and .7 millimeter. And the .8 will make the hole in the supports so that the little nails that come with it fit in easily. So if you do the .8 and just take it by hand, and it is the slightly larger, and then just rotate that by hand, it'll make that hole just slightly bigger and that tiny little nail will fit right in it. The 7 worked also, but that one I was having to take my belt sander, and I think in the video I said grinder, but uh, I was taking the belt sander and just touching it on there and, and sharpening the edge of that nail. This way I won't need to do that, and I can use the point eight to do the pilot hole. It may then require some CA glue or some type of an adhesive to put in that little hole or on the nail when you put it in. In one of my earlier videos, I documented how I uh, did copper leafing on the statues for the ship, and these are going to go on the back of the ship. And what I've done, I've, I've kind of matched them up color-wise. Some of them have lighter patterns than the others, so I'll make sure that these lighter ones will be on the two ends, uh, you know, on one of the side or the other. And then these three, they oxidize too much, so I'll take a stiff brush to those, and I'll brush off some of that turquoise and white color. The white, I think, is just some salt, so it'll easily brush off. So let me get those on the ship and show you what they look like. Here are the statues in place, and I'm very pleased with how they turned out. I didn't want them to be all shiny and gold. I wanted them to look weathered, and they do have the appearance that I was striving for. These are the ones across the back of the ship. Very happy with how they turned out. I'm going to experiment more and more with other uh, projects that I have inside my head in the future. That's it for part 23 of my Building the Black Pearl. Still have some things to put into place and a lot more work to do and, and uh, masts are not too far off in the distance. So I'll be working on that. I'm home for the summer so I can continue working uh, day by day and making progress. This is Boiler Dan 1 saying thanks for watching.